Hello, and welcome to Generative AI for Beginners. Today, we'll be covering chat applications. I'm Jasmine Greenaway, and let's get into it. First, we'll cover the differences between chatbots and generative AI chat applications. Then we'll talk about building and integrating chat applications. Then we'll focus on options for the user experience and then how to enhance it. Then we'll talk about performance and capturing metrics around the applications. And then we'll talk about leveraging AI responsibly. And then we'll wrap up with a set of demos. So let's start with the difference between a chatbot and the chat application. Both facilitate some sort of communication. Chatbots often follow a set of predefined scripts and rules. And in contrast, Advanced chat applications, especially those powered by generative AI, can generate new and contextually relevant responses in real time. A great example of this is when you ask a chatbot something along the lines that's something outside of its domain. It may say something like, I don't know, ask another question, where a generative AI application would ask for more context or provide a best guess. When it comes to building chat applications, it's not always about making them smarter, but also making them performant and a great experience for the user. So let's talk through some options for building a chat application. First is the usage of APIs and SDKs. When you're building an application, one of the first things you're going to want to do is assess what's already out there and save yourself a little bit of time. And APIs and SDKs are a really great first step to leverage functionalities that you don't have to build from scratch. And it also reduces some overhead and speeds up your development process so you can focus on the parts of your application that are the most important to you. Next is enhancing the user experience. And this can be quite important because general UX principles apply, but there's also going to be some additional considerations that become important due to the nature of this application. So adding features that allow users to ask for clarifications, should your chat application generate an ambiguous answer? Also maintaining context, retaining the context so that a user can build prompts based on past information, as well as things like personalization to be able to allow the user to tailor the responses that are the best fit for them. And you know, going deeper into this idea of personalization, um, you want to tailor the user experience so that the user can receive specific answers that the user that make the user feel good and really just more understood. And last but not least, accessibility. Accessibility across visual, auditory, motor, or cognitive impairments provides an experience that allows your application to be used by everyone. Some things you might want to consider are resizable text, screen reader compatibility text-to-speech and speech-to-text functionalities, visual cues for audio notifications, voice commands, and simplified voice options. Now, let's move on to another way to apply customization through a process called fine-tuning. Fine-tuning is often considered when a pre-trained model falls short in a specialized domain or a specific task. So, things like company jargon, or maybe context around a particular medical condition that a, phys a physician is trying to diagnose can fall under this category and are usually great candidates for fine tuning. Now the process of fine tuning requires a data set and a existing pre-trained model, an LLM. And what normally happens is that that model is trained with a data set to apply that specific domain knowledge. So let's look at an example of this with Azure OpenAI. One of the first steps in applying fine tuning in Azure OpenAI is selecting a base model. And this model is what you will train with your training data. And that next step is selecting that particular training data. Now, this is probably going to be your longest step. You might have to clean the data. You might have to format it in a particular way. And you, know, you can also refer to the docs on how to do that. Um, but this will probably take a little bit of time to massage the data into, the, into a way that is that is consumable for the model to be used to, and also to be used effectively. Next, 
you have the choice to apply hyperparameters. So one of these hyperparameters might be things like an epoch, which defines the number of times that the learning algorithm will work through the entire training data set. And finally, after selecting your data and your hyperparameters, you can now start training that model with a data set. And as soon as it's done, you're ready to go and use this new fine tuned model. Another option is retrieval augmented generation or RAG. It's an architecture pattern that augments the capabilities of a LLM, like for example, ChatGPT, by adding an in informational retrieval system that provides grounding data. And adding this system gives you control over grounding data used by an LLM when it forms a response. Now, here, what we're looking at here is like a diagram of, of this particular architecture using Azure services. So in here, we have Azure AI Search and Azure OpenAI. And this architecture diagram isn't like every, every RAG architecture, but it's, it really provides a really great high-level summary of the pattern. And basically how it works is that you would start with a user question or request, also known as a prompt. You would send that to something like Azure AI Search to find relevant information. And then you would send the top ranked search results to an LLM. And finally, you would use natural language and reasoning capabilities of the LLM to generate a response to that prompt. So let's start applying these steps onto the architecture diagram that we're looking at right now and, and map them to the services. So the web app on the left here provides the user experience. So the user will essentially ask their questions or prompts there in that particular app. Now the code in the app server orchestrator coordinates the handoffs, handoffs of the user experience between the informational retrieval and the LLM. So essentially Azure AI search and that large language model that might be in Azure OpenAI. So inputs pass through here to get search results through a query but also go to the LLM to set the context and intent. So that query in Azure a OpenAI Search or Azure AI Search can really handle the keyword or term or vector queries. Now the LLM receives the original prompt plus the results from Azure AI Search. The LLM will analyze them and essentially formulate a response that goes back to the user. Now, Azure AI Search provides inputs to the LLM prompt, but doesn't actually train the model. And this is really where it deviates from fine tuning. So in RAG architecture, there's no extra training. The LLM is pre-trained using public data and generates gen responses that are augmented by information from the retriever. And you can learn more about this pattern in chapter 15 of the curriculum. Now we'll move on to considerations for a high quality AI driven chat experience. We'll look at performance metrics and how to use AI responsibly in these sections. So numbers matter. And it's essential to keep track of metrics like response time and user satisfaction to make sure their application is performing at its best. So considerations for performance metrics fall across time, accuracy, user perception error rate, and anomaly detection. And time is usually one of our most valuable resources. And one of the things you really want to consider is how long does it take for a user to get the answer that they're looking for? How long does it take for your application to run successfully? Measurements like uptime and response time fall under this category. Another in, in consideration is accuracy. And metrics like precision and recall that also create what is known as F1 score can be helpful here. Moving on to user perception, this can really come from a number of different sources. For example, surveys, user interviews, or user studies. And the important thing here is what will you do with the feedback and how will you apply it and integrate it into your chat application? Another consideration is error rate, or how often the model makes mistakes in understanding or its output. And finally, anomaly detection or identifying unusual patterns that, that don't conform to expected behavior. And one of the things you might want to consider here, and really every, and really all these metrics, is how will you respond to these? 
Another component for a high quality chat application is using AI responsibly. And Microsoft has an approach to responsible AI that is split into six principles that should guide AI development and use. It's important to build trust and inclusivity amongst your user, present, prevent harm, protect their data, as well as provide improvement and corrective measures in case of mistakes. Let, let's take a look at some demos. The first demo I'm gonna show you is a basic usage of the Azure Open AI endpoint in, in the Azure Open AI service. So we're in a .NET interactive notebook. And what we're gonna be doing is bringing in three libraries here, Azure, Azure Open AI, SDK, as well as system environment for some configuration steps. So I've already brought in my endpoint and my key, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click these cells and go ahead and click on the cell. Before I do, I just wanna kind of walk you through what's happening here. We're telling them, we're telling uh, the, we're sending in a, a system prompt that says that you're a software engineer that ended your day and and the user or the input that's going that's going to take in is what tasks need to be doing. So essentially, this chat, this application is a software engineer finishing their day, and they need a task list of what to do at the end of their day. Now in Azure OpenAI, you deploy you deploy your your LLMs and you give them a label. And so that's what's happening here on this line here, where we're called uh, get chat completions. And so we are accessing the chat completions model, and this is essentially chat uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, and we're we're accessing it to to complete our our message here and our input and respond to our input. And there we go. So here are our steps that we need to do to wind down for today. Now that was a really basic example, but now I'm going to show you a little bit more of an involved example. Um, of a .NET application that is has a basic chat app here. So let's go ahead and ask the chat app, what is the highest point of NYC? And we immediately got a question or answer or response back saying the highest point is in Staten Island, reaching an elevation of 410 feet or 125 meters above sea level. And as we can see on the left here, kind of how similar how you would see this in uh, in ChatGPT, it actually summarized. We actually use Azure OpenAI to summarize the conversation that we're having on the left side here in our chat history. If you're interested in learning more about building chat applications with generative AI, or even learning other topics, visit our curricula listed here. In the curricula, You'll find more in-depth information about this topic and many others, including interactive notebooks for you to try out for yourself, like the one you saw here. Happy learning.